Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So last week we were doing the algebra behind own price elasticity of demand. And this week we're going to extend that. And now we're going to be looking at the income elasticity of demand instead. With that said, let's get right into things. So similar to last week, we're going to have four values given to us in an income elasticity of demand question. We're going to have an initial income and an initial quantity demanded, as well as a new income and a new quantity demanded. So I have those written down on the side of this board right here. And so here what we see is N, which represents income, is falling from 45000 to $40,000. So income is actually going down. So there's a negative change in income. But we notice that quantity demanded goes from 100 to 102. So it actually goes up. And that's something that we're going to explore by the end of this. You'll understand why that's happening, why income could go down and quantity demanded would go up. However, in the meantime, let's calculate the elasticity as that's what you're here for. Just as a reminder, income elasticity of demand is equal to the percentage change in QD over the percentage change in the determinant. And in this case, the determinant is income, which is N. So just like last week, we're going to take new minus old over old. So I'm going to take new. So I'll write this out for you. New QD minus old QD over old QD. And remember, this is just the formula for percentage change that we talked about last week. I'm going to have all of this over new n minus old n over old n. And now I'm simply going to sub in my values and see what we get. So new QD is right here. It's 102 minus old QD up here, which is 100 divided by 100 all over new N, which is 40,000, open some brackets here, minus old N, which is 45,000, all over old N, which is 45,000. So what am I left with? Well, 100 and two minus 100 is two. So I have two over 100, which is simply 0 0.02. And then on the bottom, I have 40,000 minus 45,000, which is negative 5,000 over 45,000. If you type this into a calculator or do the mental math, you will be left with negative 0.11. So this is our elasticity. So I'm going to write this out as an integer, and this is simply equal to 0 0.1, negative 0 0.18. And this right here is my elasticity or my income elasticity of demand. So firstly, we know that 0.18 is less than one. So we know that this is in fact inelastic, but moreover, it's interesting that it's negative and that's important when it comes to income elasticity of demand, because whether the elasticity is positive or negative will tell you if the good is an inferior or normal good. So traditionally, if your income would go down, that would mean you would demand less of a good. Well, that's only true for normal goods where your income is positively related to the amount that you would buy or your quantity demanded. However, inferior goods, your income and your quantity demanded are actually inversely related. We have a video that goes over inferior versus normal goods. So take a look at that if you're a little bit confused about what I'm saying. As your income goes down, you would actually demand more of the inferior good because you can't afford that normal good that you would otherwise be purchasing. So if income goes down, from 45,000 to 40,000 and quantity demanded goes up from 100 to 102, then I know that one, my elasticity of demand is going to be negative and two, I'm dealing with an inferior good. Next week, we're going to be looking at the cross price elasticity of demand. So make sure to stay tuned for that if it's something that interests you or something that you find you're struggling with in school. We really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel and comment what sort of economic topics you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.